All right. Actually, guys, we have a surprise for you. Um, I didn't know this, but they yeah, had prepared. They prepared <laughs> game two and three. So we can watch. Um, apparently, they're they're shorter than the first game since, uh, and we already know the result of it. Uh, Idra did lose these last two games, but we did still want to show you them. So, so we're going to do that. We have some more time in the studio. Actually, we're um, maybe about an hour away from starting uh, to, uh, the live cast. The live tonight. cast. Yeah. So we just have some extra studio time. So we're just going to uh, do that one. So let's get ready for game two. Uh, Neil versus Idra. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is the beginning of uh, game two. I draw in the bottom left and Neil on the top, oh, I'm sorry, top left. <coughs> um, different map now, Coliseum. Coliseum is very uh, cool map. I'm also very turtle friendly, like um, Andromeda. What do you think uh, Idra will do differently? I mean, I know the game one was a great m macro game. Um, well, do you think he would, he's just going to start off with doing what he did before since, you know, he won? I think, um, I, I would predict that um, Idra is going to go for the uh, macro game again. Idra it just almost always goes for the macro game. Idra actually started out initially um, on BGH, uh, like a lot of StarCraft players. Um, and then eventually switched over. So uh, I think he feels most comfortable when he's just mass producing. Now the Zerg is actually scouting in the correct direction. And also note that the Terran uh, is going to be walling in. Now, nah, Zerg's gonna go for the hatch on 12 here, from what it looks like. Greg's probably gonna find his opponent um, a little bit later on. He may spot that overlord. So, judging from the first game then, what do you think that the Zerg should do differently? Um, well, the Zerg kinda has to play off whatever the Terran's doing. Um, my bet is that uh, the Zerg is probably going to focus more on being aggressive uh, early on because basically that entire last game we saw was the Zerg defending. I mean, this, and some of the battles might have been in the middle of the map, but for the most part, Zerg never got the opportunity to um, deal heavy damage to the Terran space. Now, um, take a look at the Zerg. Zerg's going for the two hatch, which means that um, we're probably going to see some aggressive play. So that may be the case. Now, as you can see, Greg getting the command center up. Well, Greg's going to spot the. Um, fast gas here by the Zerg and probably do his best to try to defend. Now taking a look over here at the Zerg's base, Zerg still has not done much about that scouting SCV which I think Zerg really needs to do. He wants to definitely take that SCV out before the layer finishes. Now this could possibly trap the SCV in here. The only way that Greg will be able to get the SCV out now uh, with those Zerglings at the ramp will be to uh, right click on it, one of his mineral patches that he can see and force the SCV through. But if he doesn't spot that, he's going to lose it pretty quickly. Should be a spire. Yep.
Whoa. Greg is going to play a little bit differently. Um, normally, you don't see a double factory against Zerg. This is a very hard style to pull off. He's going to need to use Goliaths and turrets, turrets uh, then to hold this off. Now, I got to say, um, I don't know if Greg is going to be equipped to take on a player like Neil with a build like this. Now, clearly this isn't a build that just Greg decided to do. Obviously, his coaches and teammates probably encouraged this build as well. Net, neck units tend not to work too effectively. Um, against Zerg, Mekin has even less mobility um, than going for the uh, a bio build like Medic Marine. The Mutalisks are going to be out very soon, and plus one attack is on the way. Zerg may very well know that Mekin is going on. Having the upgrades for the Mutalisks is critical. Well, he's out now. I don't know if Craig's quite ready. Well, now it's going to be up to Greg to hold up this Mutalisk harassment. Man, Craig's turret timing is so good. I mean, it's really impressive, honestly. Unfortunately, that armory is in a pretty vulnerable location. Look at Neil's control with these Mutalists. It's, it's, it's honestly quite impressive. I like that bunker placement right there. That really makes Mutalist harassment um, completely ineffective at that expansion. Now, we tend to see um, Zerg players, when fighting against the mech, usually the strategy that they want to go with is to make a ton of Mutalisks. I mean, a ton, like we're seeing here. And uh, force the Terran to make nothing but Goliaths. And then after that, the Terran immediately um, wants to push out, but Zerg will switch to Hydralisks. Um, and the Goliaths are not quite as effective against Hydralisks. So you usually see a, a mutilus hydralisk combination. We'll see if that's what happens here. But instead, he may be going for um, mutilisk zergling, actually. I see zergling speed being upgraded. But you know what? Greg really does not want to lose that armory. That's really going to hurt him. Oh, man. That is bad news for Greg. Uh, he's not going to get that upgrade out in time. That armory uh, needed to be put in a better location. It should be put in the very bottom left corner of the main, I mean the last spot for the Zerg to ever even see it. A drone is in on this as well. What is this drone story? All right, looks like Greg's actually, um, well, barely going to uh, lose this. And as you can see, when they're forced to just make nothing but the Goliaths, the ground units, in this case, sometimes you see Hydralisks, are just so effective. And that's it. And you can see Greg just gave up there. He knew he had lost momentum. And unfortunately for Greg, uh, I don't think he should have gone with that build order. Um, and he definitely should not have lost um, that armory because he had he has no late game presence. Uh, that really hurt him. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, let's waste no time. Let's go straight into uh, game three. Let's go to game three. Let's do this. We are ready.